Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Collective Worship today. The Lord be with you. I hope you're all well. I've realized it's been a very long time since we've seen each other, about 10 weeks or so. I mean, Billy the Bass here hasn't been for a swim for a very long time, and he's beginning to dry out, so we'll have to find him some water soon. We'll figure it out, I'm sure. But anyways, today we're thinking about Pentecost. And two days ago, the church around the world celebrated Pentecost, which is the coming of the Holy Spirit. And do you remember what happened in collective worship a couple weeks ago? We saw Jesus disappearing into the sky, into the clouds, and the disciples were trying to figure out what was going on. And then they remembered the words that Jesus said to them, that Jesus was going to send someone to take his place. So although they were going to miss Jesus, although they had to say goodbye, Jesus was sending someone, the Comforter, to come and take his place. So we're going to have a look at that video now of what happens next in Jesus' story. And then we're going to talk about it. God sends help. Jesus' friends and helpers huddled together in a stuffy upstairs room. Even though it was sunny outside, the shutters were closed. The door was locked. Wait in Jerusalem, Jesus had told them. I am going to send you a special present. God's power is going to come into you. God's Holy Spirit is coming. So here they were, waiting. Actually, mostly what they were doing was just being scared and hiding. Well, you can't blame them. Their best friend had left. The important people and leaders were after them, and Jesus had given them a job they didn't know how to do. As they waited, they were praying and remembering, remembering how, from the beginning, God had been working out his secret rescue plan. Suddenly, a strong wind filled the little room, whistling through the walls, rustling the straw on the floor. And there, on everyone's heads, shining in the gloom, were flickering flames, fire that didn't hurt or burn, and something more. Inside, in their hearts, they felt a strange heat, almost as if all the coldness and hardness were melting away, as if their broken hearts were mending and God was giving them brand new hearts, hearts that could work properly. How it happened, they didn't know. But they knew God's power had struck their hearts ablaze, and Jesus himself was coming to live inside them. They had seen Jesus go away, but now he was closer than he had ever been, inside their hearts. And this time, nothing could ever separate them. Jesus would always be there with them, loving them, whispering the promise that would get rid of the poison and the terrible lie and the sickness in their hearts. God's wonderful promise to them, you are my child and I love you. Make your home in me as I make my home in you. Jesus had said. Could it be? Heaven was coming into their hearts? They threw open the shutters. Sunlight flooded their room as love had flooded their hearts. And the little room was filled with happy noises, dancing feet, singing, laughing. They unlocked the door and surged out into the streets as if they had never been afraid. Peter spoke in a loud voice so everyone could hear. Jesus died for you, he said, because he loves you. But God made him alive again. He has rescued you. People stopped and listened. The words sank down deep into their hearts and worked like a medicine that makes you well, like the antidote to a deadly poison, like a kiss that wakes you from a deep sleep. Stop running away from God, Peter said. Run to him instead, so he can love you and make you free. And Peter told them the wonderful story of God's love. God's never stopping, 
never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. How Jesus had come, all that had happened. There were lots of people from far away countries in Jerusalem. They couldn't speak the same language, but as they listened to Peter, everyone could understand what he was saying in their own languages. Many people believed and became Jesus' new friends and helpers. And the wonderful news of Jesus spread like sparks from a fire to villages, towns, cities. Every day, more and more people believed. And so it was that the family of God's children, his special people, grew. One man was watching. I'll stop this, Saul said. But this was God's plan, and nothing in all the world would ever be able to stop it. So we have this crazy story of the Holy Spirit coming like tongues of fire and resting on each person. And what was it like before the Holy Spirit came? Have a think about this story and what did the disciples look like before the Holy Spirit came? I'm just going to pause the video here to give you a chance to talk to your parent, teacher or carer about what did the disciples look like or what did the scene look like before the Holy Spirit came. That's right, it was dull and it was gray and it was all a bit lifeless, wasn't it? And what was it like afterwards? That's right, they heard God saying to each one of them, you're my child and I love you. It was colorful and each person felt like God was living inside each of them. Now, there was something else that was different as well. And that was that they were able to speak boldly. They were able to speak confidently. They were able to speak loudly about everything that God was doing for them. So instead of being quiet and just keeping everything to themselves, they decided to tell the whole world and the news of the love of God began to spread from person to person to person to person. And there was something else different, which was that they were able to do something different as well after God's Holy Spirit came. And that was they, they were able to speak boldly. In other words, they were able to speak loudly. They were able to speak confidently about what they believed and how to share God's love with other people. So we have a candle here that we're going to light and uh, we're going to pray. And this candle is a sign and a symbol and a reminder that the flame of God's love rests on each one of us whenever we ask God to be a part of our lives. So let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you that you have come alongside each one of us to come and live within us. And we pray, God, that we would know more of your love so that we can spread more of your love to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, see you later, everybody. Thanks for joining us.